Hello, it is my pleasure welcoming you to the lecture on projects and their management. In this lecture, we are going to talk about what is project management and related knowledge areas. Here the first question arises, why the heck you need to learn about project management when we are talking about course on earned value management and when this course focuses on helping you to how to prepare EVP certification or earned value professional certification. So let us understand answer to this question first before we get into deeper. There are two reasons for that. First is, earned value management is one of the project management tools and techniques which focuses on project performance management. We know this thing. Therefore, earned value management can be treated as a subset of project management. Therefore, to understand earned value management fully, we need to have some good understanding of bigger pie that is project management. There is a second and, and more intrinsic and important reason behind that why we have to understand project management. This is coming from exam standpoint. Note that uh, topics beyond earned value knowledge areas such as project management, something that we are covering now here, and other topics such as scheduling, budgeting, etc. are also important from exam standpoint. You might expect certain question related to such topics in the exam. Now, when we are planning to take earned value professional certification, there are fair chances that you have decent knowledge of project management anyway. Even if you don't have uh, any knowledge of project management, as the name suggests, project management is managing projects towards their success. When we do project management, we may have many tools and techniques and we manage the projects as project managers. So as we'll, we will go deeper into the course, we'll understand that earned value management is not just calculating what is earned value indices such as SPI, CPI, but it is to complete project, but it is a basically the earned value management is a basically a complete project performance management system, which is set up within the overall project management ecosystem of an organization or a project. For an value system to operate, it needs to interact with several other project management system, which is shown here on, on your screen. And tools and techniques such as scheduling techniques, cost estimation, busting, and many more techniques interact with overall earned value management system. With this backdrop, let's get deeper and understand what is project management starting with learning objective of the lecture. After completing this lecture, you will be able to understand what is project management. We will talk about what are programs and portfolio and their management. Second thing we are going to cover here is what is project management office, their roles and responsibility. And at the end of the lecture, we are going to talk about uh, difference between project and production or manufacturing. Now let us understand and start with our lecture with what is project management. When we look into term project management, as we see the project management is built of two terms, that is one is project and the second term is management. Probably understanding of these terms in detail will lead us to better understanding of what is project management. So let us split the term project management and start our discussion with what is management. So I have picked up one of the definition of management so that me and you can deliberate upon what is management. These definitions come from Horald Coons, who is one of the early management guru. The definition goes on to say that management is an art of getting things done through and with people in formally organized group. It is an art of creating an environment in which people can perform and individual can cooperate towards attainment of group goals. We have underlined some of the key elements of definition that is getting the things done, creating an environment then attaining a group goal. So essentially as a manager, we have to get the things done. We have to 
create a appropriate and conducive environment so that individual can perform to achieve the goals set by us as a manager here is one more definition of management the definition goes on to say that management in a, is an art of knowing what to do when to do and see that is done in the best and cheapest way this gives little more insight towards management of getting the things done in the best as well in a competitive cost as well Go, going forward when we talk about getting the things done the question arises how the things will be done the first question is what produces result the answer is resources and know how resources can be described in by five amps and these are basically uh, first amp is manpower right this is basically human resources the second amp is machine they are equipment computers tool technology etc the next amp is materials materials can be numerous type you know for capital projects civil construction that can be cement aggregate sand you know for a uh, software the material can be numerous right uh, and sometimes the software will not have any material at all you know so then let's talk about what is next item which is method methods are rules regulation laws standard operating procedures etc money is something which is used to mobilize certain resources sometimes time can be also considered resources are input item however it is not a tangible item therefore it is not considered in our 5m list all right so there is a there is a key takeaway that is the management is all about getting the things done by deploying resources to produce the result in best and cheapest way we can relate this overall concept with the management definition we just covered a moment before right now the question arises what we should do to manage what is role of management generally role of management is to set objective deploy strategy to achieve objective coordinate within various uh, part of the organization and do administration to achieve and measure such objectives in order to manage be it a project and organization uh, you know any effort you are managing we need to do planning organizing or leading coordinating and controlling and this is what managers essentially do so who are managers and what managers do let us talk about it managers are individuals who are responsible for coordinating and integrating activities of people in the organization managers shape the culture of the teams and workplace in countless ways they have to play both role of administrative and leadership role as well managers require diverse skill to be successful but what exactly does managers do in the simplest term their role is to get the work done their role is critical for the organization success in today's dynamic you know settings business settings leadership is integral part of managerial role and plays a vital role in organization operations while management encompasses component of technical as well social process a leader has certain inherent qualities and traits which assist him playing a direct role in building commanding influence over others larger organization generally have three levels of managers which are typically organized in a hierarchical pyramidal structure senior managers such as managers of a board of directors and chief executive officers or president in the organization they set strategic goals of the organization and make decision on how well organization will operate senior managers are generally executive level professionals and provide direction to middle management who directly or indirectly reports to them middle managers for example of these would include branch managers regional manager department manager and even sometime section managers and in the project setting project man project managers direct the front line managers for getting the things done middle managers communicate strategic goals of senior management to front line managers lower managers such as supervisor front line team leaders etc oversee the works in the voluntary organization 
they can be a frontline supervisors and such people provide direction for day to day work that's all we have on the term of management now jump to the next term that is project so for we discuss about what is management now it is time to discuss what is a project as an eligible candidate for eup certification you have been into projects probably you would have completed many projects we normally say let us finish this project what the sentence actually tells us the sentence tells us that if there is a project and we have to finish that this means that project has something that must end needless to say again that if that something has an end then definitely this would have a beginning as well with that backdrop let's take deep dive into what is a project a project is a temporary endeavor taken to create a unique product service or a result product is a temporary endeavor with a beginning and an end something that we discuss a moment before project creates unique product service or result projects are progressively elaborated now let's talk about some fundamental attributes to the project and these attributes are project has a unique purpose this means it produces a unique outcome a project can be development of new road or a new software or it can be creation of new government benefit program all such things create something unique the other attribute of project is projects are temporary this means it has a start and end something that we discuss a moment before projects are developed using progressive elaboration this means that at day one of a project at the initiation of the project we do not know all the things about the project however as we progress things mature for example one day at the initial stage of project we cannot tell accurately how much the project will cost at the end of the project however when we progressively progress on the project we would know the precise scope of the project and we will be able to forecast what the project would cost at the end so in the progressive elaboration of the project we get clarity over time the other unique uh, attribute to the project is that all projects should have a primary customer or a sponsor generally the project is sponsored by uh, by funding agencies you know so a sponsor we can say in a general setting sponsors of the project will provide funding and direction to the project and one other critical attribute to the project is that all projects involve uncertainties as highlighted before at the beginning of the project or at the at the the concept level of the project at the time when the projects are being conceived we cannot foresee the future as we progress towards the project line we come to know certain elements which were not known to us and therefore these such projects are the projects involves uncertainties and to deal with uncertainties project risk management become important and crucial project of the project management let us talk about project phases here the question arises why we need project phases the answer is we need project phases for ease of managing projects typically project phases are initiation planning execution monitoring and control and closure the phase 1 project initiation let's talk about it at the project initiation initiation phase a project formally starts and gets a name the project manager defines the project at its broad level in the phase 2 the project planning phase at the at the at the the planning phase the project teams collect information combine individual plans for cost scope and duration quality communication risk resources etc to create a comprehensive project plan 
Some of the important activities that mark these phases are creating work breakdown structure, schedule, milestone charts, CAD charts, resource estimate, and resource allotment, etc. Project execution. At project execution phase, the team works on and complete the project deliverables according to the project plan. And in parallel to the project execution phase, we are going to have a phase four that is called project monitoring and control phase. The project monitoring and control phase occurs as mentioned during the execution. This phase focuses on managing project performance and that is where the earned value techniques comes in the picture. And that is what we are talking about. This course is all about that and progress and, and progress measurement in accordance to the project plan. Project closer is the, is, the, is the next phase of the project. At the closer phase, the project team and stakeholder firmly closes the project. This phase includes performing, performing a series of important tasks such as deliver, delivering the product, freeing up the resources, rewarding team and members, and formally ending the employment or services of the contractors. Now when we talk about earned value management and how it's related to project phase, it is worth highlighting that planning for earned value management system implementation is done as, as, as phase two, that is planning stage of the project. Whereas use of earned value to monitor the project performance and controls happen at phase four, that is project monitoring and control. One quick highlight, in the later part of the lecture, we will see these project phases are project phases as management, 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 sorry, uh, and we will see these project phases as a project management process group. And why so? Because they relate with each other. And then we will talk about when we reach to that point. Sub projects. Let's talk about it. Sub projects are one of the definition related to projects. So what are sub projects? Projects are frequently divided into more manageable components are sub projects. Sub projects are often contracted to an external enterprise or to other function unit in performing organization. Sub projects can be referred to as projects as well and they each sub projects can be managed as a project. Those who are into management of capital projects, they can relate a sub project to hiring of a specialized subcontractor to complete a specific scope of a project. Triple constraint. The triple constraint theory in project management says every project operate within the boundaries of scope, time and cost. Often these constraints are called R and triangle as well. A change in one of, one of these constraints will invariably affect others too. For example, if a clients want to add bunch of features to the project scope, they will have to spend more money and the budget will increase. So on the other side, if a sponsor slashes the project budget, you will need to scale back the project requirement. Every project is constrained in a different ways by its scope, you know, in terms of what work will be done at a part of the project or what unique product or service or a result uh, does customer or a sponsor expect from the project. We talked about time as well. In time, how long should it take to complete the project? What is project schedule and cost? What should it cost to complete the project? What is project budget? Here is always mix your opinion as the accuracy of and usefulness of the R and triangle. So for all practical purposes, a project where given that the project is more complex uh, than the R and triangle variable suggest, in recognition of a limitation of the R and triangle model, the Project Management Institute or PMI has extended number of constraint and the PM, PM Bog guide now includes following list of project constraints. And these are on the screen. Number one, scope. Number two, quality. 
number three schedule number four budget and then we have benefits of the project and risk projects and strategic planning it is important that projects and their management are aligned to organization strategic objective and they are planned in a strategic way and and the goals of each project matches with the organization strategic goals why so because projects are means for organizational activities that cannot be addressed in organization normal operation therefore we need project however projects are means to fulfill the the organization strategic objective therefore there is or uh, there should be an alignment between our national strategic objective and projects outcomes as we know projects are typically authorized as a result of one or one or more of the organization strategic consideration and these consideration can be a market demand and organizational need customer request technical advancement legal requirement ecological impact social need and there can be similar other consideration which may lead to initiation of a project so we are back to the term project management again so far we talked about term project and management individually in considerable detail now let us understand what do we mean by project management in totality so what is project management project management is application of knowledge and skills tools and technique to project activity to meet project requirement project management is accomplished through application and integration of processes these processes are grouped in alignment of project phases that we discussed before and again these are planning initially these are initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling and closing while we can have a complete course on these project management processes however for evp certification course this lecture should limit our discussion on identification of project management process groups who manages projects let us see quickly and find answer to the question the project managers are the person responsible for accomplishing the project objectives managing project includes identifying requirements establishing clear and achievable objectives balancing the competing you know com com competing demand of quality scope time and cost and again going forward adopting a specification and plan and uh, approaches to the different concerns and expectation of various stakeholders you know so a specification what i want to say here that your plans your specification should be adopted to address the concerns of different stakeholders project managers strive to meet triple constraint by balancing a scope time and cost and the other constraint we talked about a moment before needless to say that management of the project is aligned with what the managers do we discussed also the same thing a moment before so let's take an example say you work for a software company it is not possible that a company will have only one software as offering it can have a multiple software being developed at certain point of time even if a company is offering a ho a whole solution then also they will have a certain sub packages similarly let's talk about you are working for a airport and it's it's their engineering and project department at a given point of time there can be several improvements or expansion you know as expansion project being delivered in the airport in such cases the question arises how effectively can we manage 
multiple project at a given point of time and benefit from their scale. This is where project management become more like a holistic thing and this is where the program management and portfolio management kicks in. Let's talk about such things in little more detail. So what is a program? Let's, let's focus on a definition of a program for a moment. A group of related projects management, uh, no, uh, group of related projects management in a coordinated way to obtain benefit and control not available from managing them individually. So this is how we define programs. So let's dive a little deeper and understand what is program. And similar to managing the program, a project where the project management manager is responsible for managing a project, program managers, managers are responsible for managing the program. A program manager provides leadership and direction for project management, project manager heading the projects within the program. A typical advantage of program management are it is easier to share resources. The resources can be shared, uh, uh, can be shared effectively when, when a program structure is placed because the program managers can ensure individuals, individuals and the budgets are deployed in the area that is that that is that is most they are more prioritized they need resources and so on so there is there can be you know there can be a priority made it is easier to manage conflict in the in the program management situation this is the second benefit is to do more with the interpersonal skill in the team conflict between individuals and entire project can be more uh, can be managed more easily if there are conflicts between various projects and there, there are always a situation where we see the conflicts because there are the project priority, they, 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 com they compete each other for the resources and there is always a competition to complete the individual projects on time. So when the clear hierarchies are defined and structures are made, the governance of projects under the program umbrella becomes efficient. Programs also provide more visibility of the risk, which is a third advantage. Using a program management structure is that there is a better visibility of risk. Question arises how? The risk management can be coordinated and managed in the structured way. Risk responses can be shared between the projects, so it so it shouldn't it should cause less to mitigate because one project has, uh, you know, f you know, uh, one project has identified the, the risk, and the other project can take benefit of the team. Benefit of it. Project team can work together. Say, say they don't duplicate the work of mitigation of the same risk. There can be, I uh, know, the benefit of scale in terms of risk management and risk mitigation can also be achieved. The other benefit is easier to manage the project interfaces because when there is project A and project B, they are working under the same program, then there would be some dependencies between project A and project B. That is called interfaces. Sometimes projects relies on others, right? And let's take an example. I mean, that is what interface is when the project relies on, uh, relies on others. Now, for example, there are two projects. One project is supplying water to a particular water tank, and that is the construction of water tank, right? So the commissioning of water tank can happen when the pipeline is reached and pipeline is commissioned and there is a water available to that. The simplest example. So such interfaces can be managed for optimum time and are in a structured way in a program management scenarios. So these are some of the benefits why we, why we need a pro program management, program management as managing multiple projects. Now let's talk about portfolio and their management and how it dif differs between you know project, program, and portfolios. We'll also talk about that. A portfolio is 
a collection of projects or program and other works that are grouped together to facilitate effective management of work to meet strategic business objective. Portfolio managers help their organization make wise investment decision by helping to select and analyze projects from a strategic prospect. Projects and programs in a portfolio may not be necessarily interdependent or directly related. So as you uh, as you would have just realized that while the program focus is to get the benefit from delivering multiple projects within one umbrella of program, the portfolio management is, is aligned towards the strategic goal. I mean, selecting the right projects, selecting the right programs, etc. are something we talk about when we, when we say the management of portfolios, right? So let's dig, dig deeper here and let's talk about uh, let's talk about project management, program management versus portfolio management. The project management focuses on tactical goal, whereas a portfolio management focuses on strategic goal. So what do I mean when I say strategical goal or tactical goal? When I say tactical goal, tactical goal relates to tools and techniques of, of project management. It refers to how the project will be delivered, how the resources will be brought, and what would be the project timeline, and how much it would cost a structure. Whereas, a strategical goal focuses on management of organization strategies such as what sort of project should be chosen, what sort of business the organization should, should be in, what sort of market to be penetrated, what sort of the customer the organization should follow, and so on. Essentially, manage, project management is all about are we executing out the projects well? Are the projects are on time and budget? Do project stakeholders know what they should be doing? However, the portfolio management focuses, focuses upon are we doing the right project? Are we investing in the right area? Are we investing in the right business? Do we have right resources to be competitive, etc.? So there is a clarity and that there's a boundary line between projects and portfolio management. Project management is all about you know doing the project. And portfolio management is all about strategically selecting the right projects. Now let's to take quickly a comparative view of project, program, and portfolio management, starting with the scope. The project have defined objective. The scope is progressively elaborated throughout its life cycle. Programs on the other side have larger scope and provide significant benefits while managing multiple projects. Program do constitute a scope of managing interdependencies for interfaces between various projects. Whereas, when we come to portfolios, portfolio has a business scope that changes with the strategic goal of the organization. Now coming to topic of change. Project managers can change and implement process to keep change managed and controlled. Similarly, program manager must expect changes from inside and outside the program and be prepared to manage it. Portfolio managers continuously monitor the changes in broad environment, however. Portfolio management focuses on uh, you know, making changes to programs and projects in alignment with the strategic objective of the organization. Now let's come to the point of planning of projects and program and portfolio. Project managers progressively elaborate high-level information into detailed plans throughout the project lifecycle. Program managers develop overall program plans and create high-level plans to guide detailed planning at the end of the component level. However, portfolio managers create and maintain necessary processes and communication relative to aggregate portfolios. All right. And again, the portfolios, uh, you know, focus is all upon strategic and meeting the organization strategic objectives. Cool. 
I am sure the term project management office is not new to you. The area is quite commonly, I mean, used. I mean, this this project management PO office philosophies are quite commonly used in a organization and rather a bigger organization. Now the question arises: Why we need project management office? Can't the individual individual project manager capable of managing the project? The answer can be. Even the individual project managers are capable to manage their projects in order to have some benefits in terms of implementing the implementing the you know unified set of procedures in various projects, and to take the benefit of scale, we might require something called project management office or PMO. As we discussed earlier, at given point of time, an organization will operate multiple projects. and there must be certain is in this you know standardization of the project management processes to benefit the scale of project being undertaken it leads to a department who can centralize management of projects and that is project management office so what is project management office and pmo a department that centralizes the management of project is pmo a pmo usually take one of the three important roles are three all the three roles all together that is first is project supports provide management and guidance to project managers in the given business units or in the organization project management process and methodology development pmo is responsible for developing and implement consistent standardization process other one is training the training PMO is responsible for conducting training for the programs as well. Primary function of a PMO is to support project manager in variety of ways such as managing shared resources across all the projects, identifying and developing project management methodology, practices and standards, coaching, mentoring, training and oversight. Monitoring compliance with project management standard is also one of the PMO's, you know, PMO's role. then coordinating communication across the project uh, as well as is, is 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 a pmo responsibility going forward pmo provides home for the project management and project management project managers maintain a centralized office from which the project managers are loaned out to the projects it also provide internal consultancy and mentoring advises employees about best practices and so forth management of softwares and tools and their selection maintenance of the right tools for use of employees in a project organization pmo also there's a business integration aligns the organization organization business objective with individual projects goals and individual projects objectives now we are coming to the uh, uh, a quite a quite a and we are reaching towards the end of the lecture and the topic let us discuss is what is uh, what is difference between project management and operation management operations are an organization function which are performed for ongoing execution of activities that produces the same product or service right so we'll talk about that what do i mean by same contrary to what do i mean by unique projects are temporary in nature i mean let's talk about projects projects are temporary in nature can help organization to achieve their goal when they are aligned with organization strategy so there is a difference between day to day operation and projects right so let's get deeper into projects versus organization talk about projects projects are initiated to achieve particular objective and you know and opponents leaving the particular objectives of projects you know upon upon achieving the particular objective projects are terminated or in other words declared complete projects have their own character organization and goals projects are catalysts for change 
and they are primarily initiated due to change in the requirements. Project re reduces produces unique product or service, right? Project consists of heterogeneous teams. Projects have a start and end date. Some simple examples are producing a newsletter, writing a book, implementing an LN, hiring a salesman. They, they are like simple examples, not coming from the capital project setting. Opening a new shop, producing an annual report, etc. They are the example of the project. Whereas coming to operation, the primary opera, objective of operation is to sustain business. Operation have a semi-permanent or permanent character. They have permanent organization and they have permanent goals. Intention is to maintain the status quo. Each operation produces standard product, service of operations, generally have homogeneous team. Projects are, are ongoing. Unlike, sorry, operations are ongoing. Unlike projects, they have start, they don't have start and end. So let me repeat it. You know, operations are ongoing. And contrary to the project, where we saw throughout the lecture that the projects are, projects have, you know, start and end, operations don't have start. And then they are just continuing on day to day basis. Examples are responding to customer requests, are sending customer mails, you know, taking print out every day in the office, you know, employees meeting, right? Every day it happens, you know, attending conference. They are the simple example of the operations. So we are so we have come to the end of the lecture. Let's quickly recap what we have learned in this lecture. We started this lecture with project definition and, and its attributes, right? We understood that a project is temporary endeavor undertaken to create unique product, service, or result. Going forward, we talk about basics of project management. It is the application of knowledge, skills, and tools and techniques to achieve the project objectives and to meet the project requirements. Then further we talked about program and portfolios and how they differ from the project. We understood that programs are nothing but groups of projects of similar nature to get the benefit of the scale of the projects. It is actually, it is actually helping project to move their resources from one project to other project and to manage their interfaces in a better way than we could have managed in the individual project setting. So that's what we do in the, the program management. Further on the topic of project management office, we understood that the key role of PMO is to set a standard and procedures for, for, for the project managers are the standard and procedures which are to be developed uh, which are to be adopted in the projects throughout the organization. At the end of the lecture, we discuss the key differences between operations and projects. We noted that operations are ongoing activities within the organization to sustain its benefit. However, projects, we talked about that, 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 However, we talk at the end that the projects are typically authorized as the result of, of you know, uh, we, we also talk about through, through the lecture that the projects are, are authorized as a result of, you know, market change in demands and customer requirements and so on. That, that's important takeaway. With this, we complete this lecture and we shall see you in next lecture. Have a good time till then.